परत कक्षण दीक्षा वेलकम आय थिंक दीक्षा वस्तुंड दीक्षा वस्तुंड मे बी शीज
Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Pediatrics is always the most uh, butifiable subject because a very little logic will be there but a lot of things to remember. Pediatrics is more an art of empathy, tenderness, love and care for the patient more than uh, knowledge per se, right? So knowledge is definitely there in terms of what all that we read in internal medicine, we also read in pediatrics. So with that preamble, let's make the great beginning. Good to see Muhammad, Imran, Shweta, Ajit and many more who are all online. Can the online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you, doctor? Yes. What are teratogenic drugs? Yeah, we are done, right? Isotretinoin, thiazides, tetracycline. Thiazides inhibit megakaryocytes. That's the reason they lead to fetal thrombocytopenia and liver damage. Tetracycline is notorious because it can lead to hypoplasia of enamel and pigmentation of the teeth is what you need to remember. Now coming to chloroquine. Chloroquine is relatively safe but it can lead to deafness if you give it to the pregnant woman. Relatively safe. Chloramphenicol, typically chloramphenicol if you give to a pregnant woman it can displace the bilirubin from the protein and that lead to gray baby syndrome with chloramphenicol. Quinine can lead to, if you give to pregnant women, can lead to abortion, immune mediated thrombocytopenia. And fluoroquinolones, what are fluoroquinolones? Norfloxacin, ufloxacin, gatifloxacin, uh, so all these things, glevofloxacin. So they are all fluoroquinolones. Never give fluoroquinolones either to pregnant women or the children less than 12 years. Because it can lead to cartilaginous defect. In spite of this, a lot of pediatricians still give ufloxacin. Syrup. Syrup. Right? That's a little exception, but generally it is not preferred. What is another important side effect of fluoroquine, doctor? It can lead to tendon rupture. Actually, tendon is there, no? The tendon rupture it can cause. Similarly, erythromycin, if you give to the pregnant woman, it can lead to pyloric stenosis. Streptomycin can lead to deafness, is what you have to remember. Very good to see 13 online classmates. Wonderful, doctor. So category A means no fetal risk. So category A means no fetal risk. Category B is fetal risk is demonstrated in animal or human studies. Penicillin, cephalosporin, erythromycin, clindamycin, rifampicin, uh, nitrofurantoin, ritonavir, sakinavir, praziquantel, piperacillin, they can safely be given in pregnancy. 
नो फीटल रिस्क ओनली एनिमल स्टडीज में जानवरों में देर इज ए रिस्क कैटेगरी सी देर आर इनफ ह्यूमन स्टडीज आर नॉट देर दस रीजन यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल कैटेगरी डी श्योर शॉर्ट फीटल रिस्क इज देर so never give tetracycline never give streptomycin never give topramycin never give tro- metronidazole in first trimester don't give don't give metronidazole in first trimester it can be very damaging but lot of anaerobic infections vaginal infections we give metronidazole but you need to be careful in the first trimester first trimester is most difficult because the woman doesn't know she is pregnant and we don't know that she is pregnant and we that's the reason always when you give these drugs to any woman in reproductive age group no doctor you need to be 100% sure history of amenorrhea etc etc should be taken right then quinine most vulnerable period for organogenesis is when doctor between 18 to 55 days or 3 to 8 weeks of gestation in the first trimester if teratogenic drugs if you take after 55 days there can be mental and functional abnormalities more than organ damage then uh, smoking in the mothers is a very common cause for the intra uterine growth retardation is what you have to remember now let us start the new things perinatal tuberculosis how do you manage perinatal tuberculosis i'm so happy to see 16 online classmates very good doctor so i'm editing the nurses uh, exam notes no difference between as medical and nursing they also read all these things and they are actually supposed to know all these things and they are much more practical than the medical students because they are exposed from day one to the patients right so perinatal tb truly congenital tb matlab the fetus acquired it in the intrauterine life and born with that is rare congenital tb is mainly acquired through transplacental transmission because of a lesion in the placenta or if they ingested a infected liquor tb infected liquor under revised national tuberculosis program what is the preferred method for diagnosis of pulmonary tb in mother sputum sputum examination then uh, what is safe in breastfeeding which anti tubercular drugs a mother with tb gave birth to the baby so what drug she can take inh rifampicin ethambutol pyrethromycin streptomycin keramycin cycloserine they are all safe during breastfeeding only drug is pas para amino salicylic acid is unproven if you look at the adt anti tubercular therapy which class of drugs they are during pregnancy class b class c class b means no fetal risk but animal studies have proven it postnatal tb is more common typically when there is any open infectious case usually mother herself has tb when the newborn baby is born that is more common than the congenital tb per se is what you need to remember so if you look at the perinatal tuberculosis doctor this is the favorite question of the examiner whenever transplacental transfer is there in congenital tb most common organ is not lung liver okay please don't forget this one of the favorite questions in the inicd hepatomegaly is the usual manifestation pulmonary tb in pregnancy what are the risks it can lead to preterm delivery lbw iugr anything can happen and because of the tb in the mother 
the perinatal mortality increases by almost a tenfold is what you need to remember. Then uh, anti-tubercular therapy, you treat TV acquired during pregnancy as category one. Pregnant women with TV as category or earlier days. We used to use category one and all that, right? So category one ATT need to be started immediately in case of pregnancy. And what is a very important difference that you need to remember, doctor? The most important point to know is ethambutol. Ethambutol should be used in place of streptomycin is what you need to remember. INH, rifampicin, rifabutin, they're all safe to use in pregnancy. And what is the most important adverse effect of pyrazinamide, doctor? Hyperuricemia is what you need to be kept in mind. And uh, whenever there is a congenital TB, congenital TB is very rare, but congenital TB, whenever it is there, what is the most important clinical feature? It can lead to respiratory distress, lymphadenopathy, fever, poor feeding, poor weight gain. These are all the manifestations. Now comes the million dollar MCQ in the tomorrow's exam. What is the dose of INH? 10 milligram per kg per day is what you need to remember. And always you adjust the dose of ATT at each postnatal visit according to the weight. Generally, whenever you are giving INH, we give pyridoxin, no? Do we give that in pregnancy? No. So no need to give pyridoxin routinely. If ethambidol is given in less than 20 milligram per kg per day for two months, is there any risk of optic neuritis? Generally, optic neuritis is something that you worry whenever you give ethambidol. If you give less than 20 mg per kg per day for two months, optic neuritis is negligible. So these are all very affirmative statements. Examiner will try to test and uh, know from you. And always after the completion of INH course, give BCG. Then a uh, lot of mothers will ask you a question. Is it safe to breastfeed the baby? When they have TB and taking anti tubercular therapy. Reassure the mother that it is safe to breastfeed the baby. But when will you separate mother and baby? If mother is having TB, you need to do only if the mother is very sick or if she is not adhering to the multi drug or if she is having multi drug resistant TB. Now that is all the story of TB. Once more, coming back to the torch group of infections, doctor. Wow, very nice to see Kashinath Palakurti. You know, Kashinath Palakurti is a BSc nursing student, but his answers are so knowledgeable when I conduct the nursing class, much sharper than medical students. So I told uh, some of my very favorite, uh, I'm now building another favorite group of uh, my nursing students, brothers and sisters. So they're also joining. So you are all what? Uh, you are all my daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws. <laughs> They're all my brothers and sisters. <laughs> so, um, so uh, Diksha, I brought nice tea and uh, what is that uh, store where we get the cake, Manu? Theo Broma. Theo Broma. Nice uh, cake for you, huh? because. Actually, we prepared uh, Bubbatlu on Sankranti and also Chakkinalu. I really missed to uh, bring it yesterday. Bubbatlu stay only one day. But uh, Mrs. Swapna Bharadwaj prepares very nice Bubbatlu. So I thought uh, yesterday was all uh, sweating out with kite flying. Chakkinalu cricket in the gully. I thought today no class. Let me take a real break, right? 
So, but I really miss you guys for a couple of days, especially now you are in the last trimester of pregnancy. So, another one month expected date of delivery. So, let us uh, work better, right? So, good doctor. Commonest of all the torch group of infections, what is your answer? CMB. Commonest cardiac uh, infection that leads to fetal malformation is rubella. Though CMB occur, it is not the commonest. Uh, it does not lead to malformation. It is usually asymptomatic. And what are associated with CNS calcification? CMB more than toxoplasma, more than herpes simplex. Then uh, recurrent abortions along with uh, genetic and chromosomal anomalies, they can be associated with uh, torch infections. So which chromosomal anomaly is associated with torch infections? Trisomy 16. And uh, maternal HIV or HBV or pox or malaria. They don't need to, they don't lead to any of the fetal malformations. Examiner sometimes will lure you. Will HIV in mother cause? No, only CMV causes. Will HBV cause? No, no, rubella only causes. So you need to be very sure, torch are notorious because they are associated with malformations. But HIV, HBV, pox, malaria are associated because they are associated with a high mortality. That's the point. Now, what is the classic triad in every torch group of infection that you need to remember? Very good. So, rubella, what do you see? Deafness is most common. Cataract, which is nuclear cataract and cardiac defects. Syphilis, Hutchison's triad. Chedu vinavaddu, chedu chudavaddu, chedu matladavaddu. Nakko bolna, nakko dekna, burai, nakko sunna. So deafness, interstitial keratitis and Hutchison's teeth, which is upper central incisa, which is notched. And uh, the molar tooth look like mulberry molar. Mulberry molar is what you need to remember. Then what is the triad in toxoplasmiosis, chorioretinitis, intracranial calcification, and hydrocaphilis is called triad of toxoplasmiosis is what you need to remember. Good. One minute. Let me load the next PPT. Send it as it is. Nice to see Haimavati Reddy and many more who are all online. So, Diksha, uh, morning, uh, my name, wake up call MCQs Bijaya Sunakya. I will be testing in the WhatsApp group. Kaun suna, kaun nai suna. Right? So, uh, the whole purpose is Subha Subha, 30 40 questions. You revision kar diye to, jo batti marne wala cheeze hoti hai. The day will start with a push. Right? So, have you said? So of all the methods of uh, uh, coaching, I found mantras is the most effective way because it is an immediate gratification of revision of some of the uh, high yield facts, right? So let's do it more and more 
but you need to answer actively for the questions I pose and then check the answer audio that will be more effective. So now comes a very important question. Baby is born to HIV infected mother. How do you want to manage? Mother will ask you this most important question. Start nevirapin. What is the buzzword? Nevirapin at birth. 48 pointer. Okay, no problem. We'll come back to 48. Second PBD she sent, no? Uh, okay, no problem. Start nevirapin at birth. Both nevirapin and zidovudin, if at all it is a high risk infant, then nevirapin and zidovudin. Otherwise, start nevirapin. That is, if the mother has HIV. Start cotrimoxazole to the baby. What is cotrimoxazole, Diksha? Trimethoprim? Sulfamethoxazole. Come on. Sulfamethoxazole is cotrimoxazole, no? Double strength. Bactrim DS, bolte na? So start quadrimoxazole at 4th to 6th week of age. So what is this injection, uh, the syrup for the baby? Nevirapin, nevimmune, right? Very popular one. Then, once more, away from HIV, now we are talking about cardiosteroids. There are indications whenever the lung maturity of a preterm baby is not adequate, we give steroids to the mother. Postnatally, what is the role of steroids? If you give steroids to the newborn baby, then there is a poor neurodevelopmental outcome. Especially if you give dexamethasone, the chance of cerebral palsy is more in a preterm baby for the purpose of his lung maturity. If you happen to give dexamethasone, the risk of CP is more. That's the reason dexamethasone is reserved as a last resort is what you need to remember. Generally, if you need to give steroid to a newborn baby, hydrocortisone is preferred. Is there any role for giving steroid if there is any hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy or sepsis or meningitis or meconium aspiration syndrome? No, sir. There is no role for steroid in the management of HIE, sepsis, meningitis or meconium aspiration syndrome. Now, once more, coming back to the baby born to the HIV infected mother. How do you approach? One of the favorite questions of the examiner. Get the HIV DNA PCR at sixth week. At sixth week, if it is positive, you send for whole blood sample for HIV one DNA PCR. If it is positive, then you send the whole blood sample for the HIV one. Uh, already you sent it, right? Uh, so if negative, then what do you want to do? You repeat HIV 1 D DNA PCR at six months or earlier if the child is uh, symptomatic. And uh, if that is positive, then repeat HIV DNA PCR at six weeks after complete cessation of the breast meat, breastfeed. Uh, 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 breast milk feeding and if it is negative you continue cotrimoxazole till HIV is excluded. So this is how you manage a baby of HIV infected mother 
who is if he is positive what you need to do if he is negative what you need to do the newborn baby you need to be quite sure about so you completely rely upon what hiv dna pcr as a screening and uh, uh, accordingly need to take the call suppose if a baby born to hiv infected mother hiv 1 dna pcr at 6th week if it is negative then what will you do still you continue contramoxazole stop nevirapine at 6th to 12th week depending upon the risk status of the infant now what is the importance of vitamin e vitamin e has a role in prevention of three things bronchopulmonary dysplasia intraventricular hemorrhage retinopathy of prematurity because it has antioxidant property and all retinopathy of prematurity is because of excessive oxygen free radicals leading to the injury and uh, hemolytic anemia and also vitamin e is known to have a role in prevention of preeclampsia in mother but excess of vitamin e can lead to necrotizing enterocolitis that is also there so it's a double edged sword vitamin e it is beneficial at the same time and it is also available as a oil for the newborn baby now if you look at the small fur date baby what is the meaning of small fur date baby you take a particular gestational age let us say 32 weeks there is a weight expected in a normal baby and uh, for that given gestational age if the baby is the baby which is there before you if his weight is less then that is called small fur date small fur date is not preterm small fur date is same age same 36th week but 36th week ka normal baby jitna hota hai ye baby utna nahi hai usse kam hai to usko kya bolte small fur date baby so commonly it is the intrauterine growth retardation and the pregnancy continued till the term that lead to small fur date baby it is term baby but it is not having the weight of an expected term baby because of the iugr then pre term neonates the they are definitely before uh, gestational age that is before 28 week compared to these term iugr pre term are more at risk of pda rds respiratory distress syndrome and highly membrane disease apneic spells necrotizing enterocolitis intraventricular hemorrhage sepsis and hypothermia then when will the newborn pass urine favorite question of the not examiner mother by 12 hours of age almost all of them by 48 hours most of the newborns pass meconium by 24th hour first day if the newborn does not pass meconium by 24 hours or urine by 48 hours then you this is a matter of concern so what is the largest organ in the fetus compared to that of the adult size adult may fetal adrenal is small compared to other organs but in the fetus may adrenal cortex is the largest organ of the fetus compared to adult size almost 85% of the adult uh, adrenal cortex is already developed in fetus now what is the most common manifestation when there is acute hypoxia in a newborn it is not tachycardia it is a bradycardia and cardiac systole a systole so you see newborns are able to suckle and breathe simultaneously right they know how to do swimming just they came out of amniotic fluid all that is because of their high larynx is what you need to remember
Now, once more coming back to HIV infected mother and the baby born to him. When will you establish a definitive diagnosis? See, there is always a confusion. If the mother has HIV, when the newborn is born, no. There can be a passive transfer of antibodies. And after all, you are looking in ELISA and everything, what? For antibodies. That is the reason it is very difficult. So that is the reason you don't know whether it is because of the infection or it is because of the passive transfer from the mother. That's the reason at 18 months, you need to do HIV antibody test to establish the definitive diagnosis in a baby born to the HIV infected mother. Now, very important question and a challenging scenario is, how do you do feeding? How do you give antiretroviral therapy for the infant who is born to the HIV positive mother? There are different scenarios. First scenario. Mother is diagnosed with HIV during pregnancy. Mother is diagnosed with HIV during pregnancy. What is the recommendation? Exclusive breastfeeding or replacement feeding. Either of them. And initiate maternal ART. Drug is nevirapine if breastfed. Nevirapine or ejidothymidine. I mean zidovudine. If she is not breastfeeding. You can give to the mother nevirapine or zidovudine if it is if she is not breastfeeding. But if she is breastfeeding, only nevirapine. And how long you need to give? I mean, I'm talking about uh, uh, to the baby, not to the mother. And how long? Six weeks. Second scenario. Mother is diagnosed with HIV during labor or immediately postpartum. So when you did in second trimester, third trimester, she is not found. So you did not give her anything. But she is found to be HIV positive during the labor or immediately postpartum. Then breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding. Refer mother to HIV care and evaluate for treatment. Give nevirapine and zidovudine. And duration of treatment, I mean to the baby is nevirapine and azidothymidine for six weeks followed by nevirapine, zidovudine or I mean nevirapine plus zidovudine or nevirapine for next six weeks to the baby. Third scenario, mother is receiving antiretroviral therapy already during pregnancy, but interrupts ART regimen while breastfeeding, either because she is not able to get access to the drugs, whatever be the reason. Then you can still give exclusive breastfeeding and always determine the ART alternate regime Counsel her to continue ART without interruption. And how do you treat the baby? Nevirapine or nevirapine plus zidovudine until six weeks after maternal ART is restarted or until one week after the breastfeeding ended. So that is the recommendation. All these things are given as MCQs. You have a mother who interrupted uh, antiretroviral therapy, a mother found in the labor that she is ART, I mean, HIV positive, uh, all these things. So you need to be very sure how are you going to recommend to the newborn baby? Is it nevirapine, nevirapine plus zidovudine? For how long you need to give everything? You need to take an affirmative statement according to the recommendation. That's the point. Now, coming to vaccine recommendation, is there any change in the vaccines which you give uh, if there is any HIV in the mother? Let us say HIV exposed or infected but asymptomatic baby. HIV exposed or infected but asymptomatic. What do you need to do? You can give all standard vaccines under the 
immunization, IAP, Indian Association of Pediatrics suggested. Suppose if it is a HIV infected baby who has a low CD4 count or if immunosuppressed or symptomatic, then they should receive all standard vaccines except the live attenuated vaccines, BCG, OPV, varicella. These three vaccines they should not receive. When do you want to give hip vaccine and pneumococcal vaccine to all the HIV exposed children? You have to give to all HIV exposed children, irrespective of their CD4 count, irrespective whether they are symptomatic or not. You need to give HIV and the pneumococcal vaccine is what you need to remember. So these statements about vaccination changes for a HIV exposed or asymptomatic or symptomatic baby, sure shot MCQ. Right, doctor? So that is the reason what you do know. Go back to the score in the app. You have the 40,000 MCQ question bank. In the pediatrics, some 3,000 questions are there. Buru, 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 buru. Do the revision. This gyan is all background gyan. But how fast you solve and then go wrong and then look for correct answers. Okay? Kitne gande pada diksha? Subha se? Padang like rest day. That way the four hours. Huh? Slowly improve karo yaar. Please. You are all my hope. Remember, more than I am your hope, you are all my hope. अगर आपको अच्छे अच्छे सीट मिल गया तो जरा बोस्ट करने के लिए होता है भाई हमारा स्टूडेंट्स बहुत अच्छा कामयाब हो के दिखाया एंड एक्चुअली लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स दे आर वेरी हैप्पी दे एवरी डे कनेक्ट विथ मी एंड से सर वेरी गुड कंटिन्यू द हैबिट ऑफ मॉर्निंग सो दे आर आस्किंग मी टू वेकअप इन द मॉर्निंग एंड स्टडी राइट तो अच्छा पढ़ो सर आप अच्छा पढ़ के अच्छा अच्छा ऑडियो डालो क्वेश्चन डालो हाँ हम देखते अगर टाइम मिल गए तो देखते हाँ सो so, शाम को क्लास कंडक्ट करो मॉक टेस्ट क्यों बंद किया आपने अरे क्या है सर एग्जाम नजदीक आ रहे संक्रांति संक्रांति बोल के ऐसा लापरवाही अच्छा नहीं है आपके लिए कंटिन्यू करो वैसा <laughs> मैं तो कंटिन्यू करता हूँ आप कंटिन्यू कर रहे हैं क्या आप डिड यू सॉल्व द पेपर नो नो नॉट टुडे टुडे संक्रांति सो आई डोंट वांट टू सो गुड डॉक्टर इट डजंट मैटर हु स्टडीज वन और द अदर शुड स्टडी डॉक्टर दैट इज द डील एंड स्लोली वी नीड टू इंक्रीज अवर स्टडीइंग टाइम मनु కొంచెం జర చాయ్ను మన కేక్ అని తెప్పిస్తాం సో గుడ్ పెరినా టు హెచ్ఐవి ద మోస్ట్ కామన్ ఏజ్ డిఫైనింగ్ ఇల్నెస్ ఇన్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఈస్ న్యూసిస్టిస్ కెరినియా అండ్ న్యూమోనియా హౌ డూ డయాగ్నోస్ ద హెచ్ఐవి ఇన్ ద న్యూ బోర్న్ హెచ్ఐవి డిఎన్ఏ ఆర్ ఆర్ఎన్ఏ బై పిసిఆర్ యు కెన్ ఆల్సో డూ హెచ్ఐవి కల్చర్ యు కెన్ డూ పి ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ అండ్ కెన్ or you can do immune complex dissociated p24 antigen igg elisa not helpful until 10th month because there can be maternal transfer of the uh, uh, mother se baby ko aayega and uh, always a visit is advised at 18th month for hiv antibody testing so all these things kya hota na if you are actually sitting in pediatrics and uh, you are getting hiv mothers and you are at least one two cases you manage uh, but that occasion uh, it's good if you had that we have the opportunity but our uh, internship may hiv mother hona when you are in gynecology posting uh, that combination is the problem right so when you go to the posting that the mothers don't get hiv when you don't go all mothers with hiv will come so that's what it happens now doctor 
Neonatology. Some definitions you need to be very clear. What is perinatal period according to WHO? 22nd week of gestation to first seven days after life. Ko kya bolte? Perinatal period. AGA appropriate for the gestational age. Not small, not large. Between 10th to 90th percentile of the weight for gestational age. 10th to 90th is okay. Above 90th percentile is larger, less than 10. Is not qualified in need PG. 10th to 9th. Jara mop up round me. Eligibility criteria bahot niche giraya examiner me. One more. Yeah, mop up will. Because the private medical colleges are all desperate. Nobody joined the pharmacology, pathology. Physiology, what will they do with all those seats? Na? One more mop, mop up. If you even say A for apple, come on, take anatomy. <laughs> P for pineapple. Ah, very good. Take physiology. <laughs> so finally, it has become a mockery. Uh, so SGA, small for gestational age. Baby born with a birth weight less than the third percentile adjusted for prematurity or two standard deviations below the mean for his gestational age. And um, what percentage of the birth weight is lost after you are born in the first seven days, doctor? Five to ten percent. So typical birth weight kitna hota hai? 2.8 kgs to 3 kgs samjo. 3 kgs mein 10 percent kitna hota hai? 300 grams. So... 3 kg wala munna ne 2700 ko gir jayega aur the mom will be worried because and the, all the body weight is what 60% body weight is water only so after coming to this tough world with environmental pollution mobile phones radiation uh, mobile towers, the baby will be thinking, what kind of world did I enter into, right? So, so this is a small for gestational age baby, which is not same as preterm. At least that much you would know after attending Murli Bharatwaj. I'm both kush hai. Large for gestational age baby. If you don't do exercise and only prepare for NEET PG exam, you'll become this, right? So keep exercising, keep playing, and very good. Kaushik comes five st five stairs up, walking. That inspires me, man. Eh? So large for day gestational age. Constitutionally, is most common cause. Remember, constitutional. His dad was like that. His granddad was also. Everyone was a big baby while getting born. And they torn all the vaginal tissue and then came out into this world. Right? Grandma, great-grandma was having stress incontinence. Grandma had, mom had, everyone because of this big babies getting into the world. Right? So... Then transposition of great arteries, high drops. Beckwith-Widman syndrome. Beckwith-Widman syndrome, Soto syndrome, March syndrome. Then gestational diabetes, cretinism, etc., etc. So that is all the story of causes of LGA. But constitutional most common cause. Please don't forget. Okay? Now... Very good. Kashi Nath Palakurti saying uh, ECF loss is responsible for the loss of the weight. Right? Very good. Kashi Nath, I will try to tell Vice Chancellor to give you straight away entry into MD after BSc nursing. <laughs> yes. Now, Levine staging for Hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So, Levine uh, ne hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy ko 
कुछ मनु केक आई टेक very tasty one swapna ma'am said this is for your favorite uh, mitra so i keep talking about you in the home also now doctor when do you call mild if the baby is irritable hypotonic no seizures poor suckling and respiration then moderate if the baby is lethargic marked hypotonia unable to suckle and uh, you call severe if he is unable to sustain respiration so i just leave the literature quickly for you but remember levine staging and what is this called sarnath and sarnad classification of hi so once more stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 level of consciousness neuromuscular control come complex reflexes autonomic function gastrointestinal motility they are all considered to be the criteria for sarnath and sarna sarnath is famous for what stupa e ashoka stupa kada okay very good then this is the levine i told you no levine staging of hi maximum if you remember for entrance levine is hi must examiner syncopal attack mein jayega agar tujhe malum hai to consciousness tone seizures and suckling and respiration these are the criteria mild moderate severe now what is the oxygen saturation you target for a doctor after birth to 1 minute may 60 to 65 second minute may 65 to 70 Third minute may seventy to seventy five. Fourth minute may seventy five to eighty five. Fifth minute may eighty to eighty five. And tenth minute till regular oxygen saturation may come. Come, newborn baby. That's very important while you are managing. Now. very good so <clears throat> good to see 21 online classmates now let us talk about small for gestational age babies which are also called iugr there are there is typically a malnourished small for gestational age what is that whenever during the later part third trimester may other the baby is affected and that led to development of iugr then they typically are called malnourished sga common cause is placental dysfunction that is suppose the eclampsia pre eclampsia is there there is a placental blood flow resistance increases decreased placental flow will be there then what are the pattern of iugr asymmetrical iugr is the most common variety of iugr symmetrical versus asymmetrical by a asymmetrical iugr may पैथोजेनेसिस क्या होता है डिक्रीज इन सेल साइज नॉट इन दी नंबर हेड सर्कम फरेंस मोर देन आर इक्वल टू थ्री सेंटीमीटर्स प्लस चेस्ट सर्कम फरेंस 
ponderal index, which is the weight in grams by height in centimeter cube divided by 100 into 100. Weight in grams divided by height in centimeter cube into 100. If it is, it is less than 2. And generally, prognosis is better in this, uh, um, in this type of asymmetrical IOGR, which typically is seen in Malnarish SGA. Other is called hypoplastic SGA. Typically, whenever the IOGR happens during the early part of the gestation, because of the teratogens, infections, genetic and chromosomal diseases, then what do you get? Hypoplastic SGA. Understand? So once more, uh, let us quickly look into uh, different things. Symmetrical IOGR and asymmetrical IOGR. Between the two, asymmetrical IOGR cases are 70 to 80 percent, typically late onset, more than 30 second week of gestation, decreased ponderal index, increased ratio of head circumference to abdominal circumference. That means head circumference normal hai, abdominal circumference kam ho gaya. Isliye brain is normal in asymmetrical. Brain is well developed in asymmetrical. These differences, yaad rakhega. Diksha madam? Good. And what are the example causes? Malnutrition, hypoxia, and uh, decreased, uh, I mean, placental insufficiency. They are all the causes for asymmetrical IUGI. So there is something called Delphi criteria for IUGR. Is it asymmetrical or symmetrical? Bolne ke liye. Delphi criteria kya hota hai? Abdominal circumference is less than third percentile. Right? Then fetal weight is less than, estimated fetal weight is less than third percentile. Then what is symmetrical IUGR? It is 20 to 30 percent, typically early onset. Less than 32 weeks gestational age. Here, after 32nd gestational age, you develop asymmetrical IOGR. Ponderal index is normal. Ponderal index, kya hai, bitte? Uh, weight by height in centimeter cube into 100. A ponderal index jo hota hai, normal hota hai symmetrical mein. And reduced abdominal circumference and also reduced head circumference in the case of the symmetrical. Any genetic disorder or torch, torch may give the microcephaly. So head circumference is decreased, abdominal circumference is decreased, both decreased, and that lead to symmetrical IUGR. Okay. So what is meant by Asymmetrical failure in need PG. Head circumference is normal. But abdominal circumference is less. You could not reproduce in the exam hall. That is asymmetrical. You perform That is symmetrical IUTR. मेरे प्यारे भारतवासियों एक कब होता है एक ए एसिमेट्रिकल आईयूजीआर आफ्टर 30 सेकंड वीक सो अगर आप प्रिपरेशन लेट स्टार्ट किया तो रिवीजन का टाइम नहीं मिला आपका ब्रेन तो पड़ा 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 मगर रिवीजन नहीं करे तो बकवास बेकार है ये तो प्रॉब्लम इज आप यर्ली पढ़ना शुरू किया मगर आप ध्यान नहीं दिया आप ठीक तरफ नहीं पढ़ा बड़ा बड़ा कोचिंग प्रोग्राम आ ये क्लाक रुपए पे किया सो 
your friend Anam said, Sir, how much fee shall I pay? I'm almost about to say, Are, between a daughter and dad, there is no fee. Come on, come to the class. But I thought, okay, let me check. Pay it 7,000, I said. I'll pay in four to five installments, sir. What do you say? I thought of saying, why to pay four to five installments? Come free, we'll be happy. <laughs> but it's okay. But she's very competitive girl. I like that. You know, in the first batch, when I started classes in uh, way back in 2001, Shabana was my student from Deccan Medical College. You are from Shadan, right? Deccan. She used to be a fierce Shabana. Bah! Because I was also preparing for entrance in the... She got more percentage marks than me in MBBS. So in the whole crowd of class, every MCQ she used to argue, my right home up wrong. Hai. Kabhi fees nahi pe kiya. Finally, Shabana got the uh, eighth rank. Uh, the highest rank in Deccan in those days. Never nobody got eighth rank. So that's the reason sometimes brilliant students feel insulted to pay the fee for a coaching program. But they love the coaching teacher, coaching program, you know. But it's okay. For us, uh, the real reward is an you know, opportunity to spend time with you. Teach, uh, teaching is not, I mean, fee is not a big deal for us, right? Good. So anyway, I hope uh, Anam will be in the online students. Tomorrow she'll come with fee. <laughs> right? Cash sir, you character assassination. Kar rahe ho. <laughs> so symmetrical IGR, asymmetrical IGR, lay the literature doctor. Very clear you need to be. One of the sure short MCQ in the tomorrow's need PG. Injury period, first part of pregnancy is symmetrical. Incidence is only less than asymmetrical. Genetic and fetal intrauterine infections. And all are reduced proportionally. It is a hypoplastic IUGR is symmetrical. And uh, cell sizes are normal. But here, normal number, but decreased size. Okay, got it? At least now you know there is something that we need to master between symmetrical and asymmetrical IUGR. Kalke exam mein. And IUGR dikte hi abba, symmetrical, asymmetrical, puchha, kya bolke dekta, kal uh, console me. Good. Now, uh, did you apply, Dr. Diksha? I'll write a book, Ziddi, Ziddi Ladki. Huh? So, now, apply because uh, you will get a um, center in Bombay. Then I need to plan a chartered flight to take you. Huh? So, preterm babies. Um, typically, in preterm babies, there is a periventricular ischemia. And uh, cortical vessels are more superficial. That's the reason. Periventricular ischemia. And that ischemia lead to Degeneration of the white matter. It's called periventricular leukomalacia. Cerebral palsy. They're all common in preterm babies. And why preterm babies have hypoglycemia? Because gluconeogenesis is impact. So this is how radiologically periventricular leukomalacia typically looks like. Then... Uh, if you look, preterm versus term. In them, the I mean the preterm, the brain ischemia is more periventricular, whereas in term, the brain ischemia is more cortical. That's the reason in the term, periventricular leukomalacia is less common, whereas in preterm it is more common. Typically, cerebral palsy occur without seizures in preterm. Whereas it occurs with seizures in, in term. And PDA is more common in preterm, whereas PDA is negative in term. And apneic spells are more common in preterm and they are not seen in term. And sepsis is less common in term 
and uh, retinopathy of prematurity bronchopulmonary dysplasia they are all the more of an issues with preterm so this term versus preterm differences when they are affected with neonatal hypoxia we need to be very sure about so term baby suffer more cortical ischemia more infarction which lead to multifocal necrosis porencephalic cyst hydrencephaly they are all more common in the term babies is what you need to remember humne ophthalmology mein padhai kiya na retinopathy of prematurity ophthalmology mein nahi padhe to pediatrics mein aur ek bar padhne ka mauka hai abhi bhi nahi padhe to symmetrical aegyia so retinopathy of prematurity why retinopathy of prematurity occur typically in the preterm babies whenever you are giving lot of oxygen therapy oxygen therapy that typically will lead to release of vegf vascular endothelial growth factor this will lead to proliferation of the blood vessels in the retina and they can undergo bleeding they can become fibrous and that can lead to detachment of the retina all these things can occur because of the fibro vaso proliferative uh, retina in preterm babies so in a, what is the pathophysiology there is an increased vegf and that's the reason anti vegf vascular endothelial growth factor agents have a role in the treatment of retinopathy of prematurity when will this tendency for retinopathy of prematurity is very high between 35th to 36th week of gestation so when a newborn is born as a gynecologist as a obstetrician you'll give business to two people four people one pediatrician second is uh, you'll give uh, business to ophthalmologist and uh, to the medical shop guy mainly because so many vaccines uh, mandulu everything most of the obstetricians uh, uh, sister in law or brother in law will be running the medical shop are chotu abhi paida hua re bolo akka full list ready hai akka mai to abhi bhej raha hu ye to pura 5 to 6000 rupees ho jayega huh? so a brother in law will be managing the medical shop so and in some families no ophthalmologist obstetrician pediatrician all will be one brother or sister in law complete family practice so of course they'll have a father in law like me who is general medicine guy <laughs> indian style america mein to group practice karte na sab log milke ha huh. of course there your ex wife and her ex husband <laughs> america mein ex husband of my ex wife will be a pediatrician like that so screening criteria all preterm babies born less than 30 weeks look into their eye for retinopathy of prematurity those who are less than 1500 not 2000 not 1800 not 1700 less than 1500 exam hall mein correct number nikalna hai amit shah then prolonged oxygen exposure sick baby mechanical ventilation newborn shock in the newborn they are all at risk of retinopathy of prematurity so how do you evaluate the retinopathy of prematurity indirect ophthalmoscopy should be done at 32nd week why indirect ophthalmoscopy why not direct because you need to look at ora serrata widely once more five to six differences between direct indirect ophthalmoscopy ophthalmology mein yaad hai kya diksha which will lead to uh, real inverted magnified image magnification kitna rehta hai in indirect direct aaj hi oh usme ophthalmoscopy dalo aapko 
दे देगा इट ऑल्सो केम अप टू नाइट दे आर अपलोडिंग फाइनल अपलोडिंग द आई ओ एस स्कोर ऐप ऑल्सो ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड है वो चीज वेटिंग फॉर एपल अप्रूवल एपल अप्रूव करे तो अनदर दो तीन घंटे में सर्च फीचर इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल इन इन आई ओ एस डू यू थिंक इट्स हेल्पफुल दीक्षा time saving very much because mainly what you, and we are doing a one more thing is that because suppose we are putting optimus copy you are getting the questions so you don't have to separately make uh, topic wise question is automatically the topic wise and questions so questions are just like and questions could they are coming in abundance because almost 60000 question bank is there in the back end and now we are going to add another 20000 case based studies uh, questions critical in usml style so you have adequate number and also i am trying to prepare 2000 buzzwords buzzwords bole to beba ki zoo map is a buzzword you are supposed to know when you go to in exam hall first time if you don't know beba ki zoo map <laughs> you are a bevkuf <laughs> so uh, we are not doing it specifically today we are uh, you have python data science engine it will identify the word density and in the entire mcqs and text according to that word density it will tell these are the most frequent words in this entire study material accordingly it will prepare an index of the searchable keywords in the descending order finish there's a new thing that came called chat gpt that's a new buzzword chat c h a t chat gpt uh to build question answers and uh, automated chatbots is now a child's play fifth class sixth class kid can build a chatbot right so once you are done with this entrance exam no you need to focus on such things that is a differentiator right once upon a time Hey, what is the Levin classification? Means tension, rounds me. Levin classification. Siri, what is Levin classification? Come on, show it to the professor. Finish. And not only that, you take a photograph of the baby. Siri, tell me which class does he belong to? It will tell. If you take a video and upload into the AI chatbot, so knowledge. is you don't need to contain knowledge you need to acquire uh, you need to have awareness that's all hmm? but for entrance you have to contain all this stupid stuff in the crevices and uh, fortresses of your uh, gyri and sulky now doctor indirect ophthalmoscopy should be done at 32 weeks uh, post menstrual age or four weeks post natal age whichever is later and you need to do follow up examination every one to two weeks depending on the stage till complete vascularization of the retina without any rop until then you need to do every one to two week uh, examination if rop is showing regression normally it is supposed to show regression by 40th to 44th week Of gestation, normally expect, expect, expected to. Uh, until then, you need to do uh, follow. So this is how you grade. You are able to see this uh, edge of the retinal detachment. Uh, then uh, uh, vitreous hemorrhage. All these things. will grade the uh, rop now what is corrected gestational age for preterms corrected age or adjusted age is premature babies chronological age minus the number of weeks or months he was born early for example one year old who was born 3 months early his corrected age is 9 months 
that is called corrected gestational age. Understand? So once a preterm reaches 40 weeks of corrected gestational age, it is appropriate to monitor. That is the point where you can start using the CDC growth charts to monitor. So you have the CDC growth charts. Common question is, from what age a newborn baby? A newborn baby who is full term, no problem. But a preterm is born. From when are these growth charts applicable for a preterm? When his corrected gestational age reaches 40th week is what you need to remember. And uh, how about the vaccination? Preterm babies get the same vaccination as full term babies. This is one favorite uh, luring question by the examiner. Then what is meant by coinal atresia? It is the persistence of the buccal membrane. Always you need to rule it out at birth. And unilateral coinal atresia is asymptomatic and may get undetected. But bilateral coinal atresia is incompatible with the life. It can lead to cyanosis and respiratory distress is what you need to remember. So this is a unilateral coinal atresia. This is bilateral coinal atresia. So our body is all septated body. Uterus may septum hai, nasal may septum hai, right? So that is a whole problem. Now comes hyaline membrane disease. Very good. Kashinath is giving an easy way to remember. If the headband is attached, it is called the indirect ophthalmoscopy. Good, no? If you look through up hospital ko carry karte na wo direct headband attached karke wo mirror se dekh rahe na ora serrata ko usko professor kashina the msc nursing bsc nursing right ha very good to see 26 online i think i'll call all our nursing students we will cross 100 also right so, doctor, hyaline membrane disease. Um, whenever there is a respiratory distress syndrome in preterm neonate, because of surfactant deficiency, you call HMD. Overall, what is the incidence? 10 to 15 percent in the 10 to 15 percent in hyaline membrane disease. Term ho ya preterm ho, but it is increased up to 80 percent in less than. 28 week, 26 week, 25th week, 80 percent invariably will have hyaline membrane disease. And how do you make diagnosis of HMD? What are the important criteria? Amniotic fluid, lecithin sphingomyelin ratio less than two. Then if you do shake test of amniotic fluid, no? uh, uh, typically it need to give bubbles if surfactant is there. So if it is not there, it will be negative. It is not shake test positive, shake test negative is HMD. Saturated phosphatidyl codeine levels is less than 500 mg per deciliter. Chest X-ray will show reticular nodular pattern. And because all that hyaline membranes, the bronchial uh, division is there, no? It can be seen on radiograph. That's called air bronchogram. Air bronchogram you get in pneumonias. Whenever consolidation is there, the time... Uh, if you look at, take the x-ray and look, no, there if you see the bronchial air branching pattern, normally it will not be seen unless background of consolidation, you can see the branching of the airways. That is called air bronchogram. Air bronchogram is another feature of hyaline membrane disease, ground glass opacities. These are the chest x-ray findings. If it is very severe, it becomes a Complete white out lung. You can see here. You can see the air pattern. Right? This is air bronchogram. Here also you can see the branching of the this thing. And it can become complete white out lung. So normally if this is the uh, typical airway, there is a lot of uh, deposition of this hyaline membrane. Hyaline membrane in case of 
hyaline membrane disease. And if you happen to look at the histopathology, then you can see all the hyaline membrane which is forming in case of hyaline membrane disease. So what are the common differential diagnosis for a respiratory distress in a newborn baby, doctor? Newborn baby, what often below? Transient tachypnea of newborn, TTM. Hyaline membrane disease. Meconium aspiration syndrome. Neonatal pneumonia. Pneumonia, meconium aspiration, hyaline membrane disease, transient tachypnea of newborn. A charon ke beach mein, you should know how to differentiate. Transient tachypnea typically is seen in term babies. Those who are delivered by caesarean section. Usme transient tachypnea of newborn will be there. Hyaline membrane disease is more often seen, even meconium aspiration in preterm. Neonatal pneumonia, anyway, you know, right? We will once more come back to this story. So when very severe, what will happen in hyaline membrane disease, doctor? Typically, uh, white out of the lungs can occur. So what is the story of surfactant? It is incised by fetal lungs by 20 weeks of gestation. And it is detectable in amniotic fluid by 28 to 32nd week of age and uh, whenever hyaline membrane disease is there there is a hypoxia hypoxia lead to metabolic acidosis and because of their hypoventilation there is a respiratory acidosis also because of carbon dioxide accumulating how do you manage oxygen when if distress is mild oxygen can be given by prongs without ventilator if the respiratory distress is moderate, then oxygen by CPAP. If the distress is very severe, high tachypnea, then mechanical ventilation. Right? Is what you need to... Uh, what is meant by SAMB? Synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. So baby breathes. Ventilator breathes. But they both are synced. The moment he doesn't breathe, ventilator takes up. Whenever he breathes, ventilator doesn't fight against him. That's called synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. So that breathing doesn't stop. Understand? So what is insure approach in hyaline membrane disease? I is intubate and instill surfactant. Extubate so that you are avoiding the need for ventilation. And so, ensure intubate, surfactant installation, and extubate. Intratracheal surfactant is a wonderful way by which you can take care of a respiratory distress syndrome baby. So, ensure approach, bulla nahi. Intubate karo, surfactant de do, or extubate karo. Now, intratracheal surfactant, what is the dose? 4 ml per kg. It's a very specific therapy. And in, for whom do you give intratracheal surfactant therapy, doctor? All neonates less than 28 weeks, whether they have or they don't have hyaline membrane disease. And those who are 28 weeks with severe respiratory disease. So that is the story of hyaline membrane disease. Petrol head. One hour, 26 minutes. At least we studied one hour. Now comes necrotizing enterocolitis. What is the most common risk factor for necrotizing enterocolitis, doctor? Prematurity. Entire colon and the small intestine become necrosed because of hypoxia in a preterm baby. So typically, what is the most common cause of respiratory distress in preterm baby? Hyaline membrane disease. And 
Hyaline membrane disease can also occur in a term baby, especially when the mother is diabetic, because diabetic mothers will have hyperglycemia. That hyperglycemia comes into fetus. That stimulates the fetal insulin. Insulin inhibits surfactant production. So that is the reason hyperinsulinemia in a fetus because the hyperglycemia in the mother will lead to low surfactant that lead to though the baby is born term still he doesn't know how to produce surfactant. And respiratory distress in a uh, post term baby is commonly because of meconium aspiration. So typically whenever necrotizing enterocolitis is there, the colon is completely infarcted. And there is a accumulation of gas in the wall of the colon, which is called pneumatosis. All this gas, what is that sign called? Whenever gas is there in the uh, colonic wall, regular sign. This will make the outline of the wall of the colon because the gas outside and inside on both the sides of the wall will give you regular sign positivity. You remember the regular sign, football sign, all that we studied in uh, perforation of the gut with pneumoperitoneum. Okay. Selective revision of search in uh, uh, app. Eh? Uh, actually, we study four to five hours a day. It will show up in our face. We'll be happy. We'll be energetic and uh, hopeful. Right? Simple doctor. Fikarna kam. Padena jada. Fikarna kam. If you feel very tension, just go and sleep a while. Get up, have a cup of tea and then this is the karma I'm passing. Another 40 days is there in my bank. That is how you need to feel. Right? But don't kali fikr te ye in ke saath, un ke saath, kya hai mere jindagi. The worst thing is sympathy. Empathy is good, not sympathy. Right? So, sympathize on yourself. Okay, man. I'm, uh, that's what I really like in uh, your friend. What's her name? Anam. She's a brilliant student in her MBBS. Anam Sultana. But with two wonderful little tiny thoughts, so lovely kids. She needs to take care of them. She needs to put them to sleep and then need to sit and study. But she's determined to become a winner. And that will be a great day when she makes it to Gynops and show all the boys in her class that, see, after producing two babies also, I became a topper. What do you say, Kaushik? Good. So, meconium aspiration syndrome. What is meconium? Meconium has epithelial cells, lanico, mucus, amniotic fluid, bile, and water. And meconium aspiration is common in postern than preterm. And what is the consequence of meconium aspiration? Obstructive emphysema, adelectasis of lungs, pneumonitis, chemical pneumonia, oxygen exchange get affected and it can lead to RDS, pneumothorax, primary pulmonary hypertension. All this can occur with them. Why primary pulmonary hypertension? Because it is leading to hypoxia, alveolar hypoxia. Hypoxia lead to vasodilatation everywhere. But in the lungs, hypoxia lead to vasoconstriction is what you need to remember. Typically, if you look at the chest X-ray, there is a coarse granular pattern, age trapping, emphysema, hyperinflation. All these things can occur in chest radiograph. So there is an X-ray showing lung epithelial damage because of the meconium aspiration in neonate with meconium. Aspiration syndrome. So now coming to the oxygen toxicity. In preterms, oxygen, remember always, whether it is COVID patient or a 
newborn baby oxygen is a medicine oxygen is a poison so you need to be very careful while administering oxygen to the patient so especially prolonged retinopathy of prematurity retrolental fibroplasia means what you have the lens lens ke piche kya hai vitreous vitreous ke piche kya hai retina forever so whenever oxygen is excess it stimulates the egf and that lead to a lot of neovascularization vascular endothelial growth factor that grows into the vitreous and that can lead to retinal detachment or it can even lead to vitreous hemorrhage and where is vitreous behind the lens isliye isko kya bolte hain retrolental fibroplasia similarly excess oxygen can lead to lung becoming dysplastic and it can lead to chronic lung disease is what you need to remember now few words on antenatal steroid therapy kya kya steroid dete ho aur uska dosage kya hota hai examiner want to know from you injection bidamethasone 12 mg i am 24 hours in two doses dexamethasone 6 mg i am 12 hours four doses and uh, antenatal steroids are more effective for female fetus and they are better with uh, betamethasone right than dexamethasone betamethasone is better and what is steroid decrease hyaline membrane disease intraventricular hemorrhage is decreased by 40% and also overall mortality by 40% and also they will decrease the insensible water loss and uh, there are some long term complications occur if you give multiple doses of antenatal steroids it can lead to cerebral palsy and uh, neuronal damage then doctor <clears throat> so this is the story of antenatal steroids kaun sa steroid dete ho kya dosage mein dete ho kiske liye fayda hota hai uske wajah se kya kya uh, problems ho sakte now antenatal steroids what are the guidelines of rcog to so, Yesterday, one uh, nursing student called me from Madhya Pradesh. Oh, but Madhya Pradesh, me, बहुत शुद्ध हिंदी बात करते. Sir, मैं nursing पढ़ रहा हूँ. Nursing में join हुआ. ये पुरुष लोग करे तो कैसा होता? पुरुष भी करे कर सकते क्या? मैंने बोला कि अरे मैं doctors में पुरुष होते, स्त्री होते, लिंग वेद नहीं होता है. so half an hour he engaged me i was enjoying his his uh, shuddh hindi end me wo bola sir aap se pura din baat karne ke liye man lag raha hai sada aapki seva mein <laughs> so there are two there are advantages for three people doctor always remember doctor teacher politician doctor teacher politician even when you are dying on the death bed also there will be somebody to talk with you to talk with the people is a specialized privilege of any professional but especially doctor teacher and uh, politician so i am all the three i mean except politician all the remaining two <laughs> so फिर भी दस साल के बाद हम डॉक्टर पार्टी लगाएंगे नेशनल डॉक्टर पार्टी ऑल ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स विल आई गिव द सीट्स एज एमएलए एमपी सर तो हम जैसे लाइक आम आदमी पार्टी के जैसे असाधारण आदमी पार्टी ओनली डॉक्टर्स विल बी गिवन ए मेंबरशिप इन द पॉलिटिकल पार्टी सो significant decrease in rds ivh and death occur with antenatal steroids and safe for mother 
single course of antenatal steroid when you want to give 24 24 week plus 0 days to 34th week plus 6 week 6 days gestation who are at risk of preterm birth you can give you can still consider 23 plus 0 to 23 3rd week plus 6th day also but decision of use less than 24 weeks means senior pediatrician aapko sahmat hona hai most benefits are typically delivery 24 hours to 7 days after the course. Most of the benefits of antenatal steroids are there for the delivery done 24 hours to 7 days after finishing the antenatal steroids. It also reduces the neonatal deaths within 24 hours. There should, therefore, it should be given if delivery is expected within this time. Then when do you want to use with caution antenatal steroid? Septicemia or TB, you should be cautious. And uh, whenever there is any overt chorioamnionitis, let us say there is premature rupture of membranes and there is um, uh, chorioamnionitis, then uh, giving steroid is a double-edged sword. That's the reason you need to take the opinion from the senior. How much? Every decision, doctor, remember, when you are writing any drug, cost-benefit analysis and benefit and damage analysis. Because all drugs are double-ended swaps. You need to be careful. Talwar ka istemal karne ke pehle ek bar soch So, uh, over chorioamnionitis. Similarly, TB. TB, if you give antenatal steroid, there is a flare up. And uh, in both scenarios, it should be reserved. All women with risk of preterm delivery, up to 34. Diabetes is not a contraindication for ANS use. Insulin dose you will control them. All women with the, but that is if you don't give, there is a bigger damage waiting. Na? Uh, huh. So all women with risk of preterm delivery up to 34 weeks plus six days of gestation, all women for whom elective LSCS is planned prior to. 38 plus 6 weeks of gestation. In them, you should reserve. I mean, individualized decision. Then, uh, and another important thing is, even in multiple pregnancies, uh, Diksha, you should not say, sir, twins are there, so two doses of uh, antenatal steroid, nine. Even in multiple pregnancies, single dose only. Then, elective upper segment cesarean section should be done at or more than 39 plus 0 weeks. And pregnancies where there is IUGR between 24 plus 0 till 35 plus 6, they are at risk of delivery and they should also receive. And uh, single rescue dose need to be given, especially in pregnancies whose first dose was given less than 26 weeks of gestation. For them, you can, if the pregnancy is continuing, then you can give single rescue, rescue dose can be given. So that is uh, important recommendations, doctor. Examiner expects you to take a very affirmative uh, um, stand on this, right? So, retinopathy of prematurity. Very nice to see more than quarter century, 26 online students. Good doctor. Kaushik, you want a break or uh, fine? You're fine? I don't know.
I finished all the sweetness at home and came. So, retinopathy of prematurity. What are the preventive strategies? Prenatal steroid. Give oxygen judiciously, not aggressively, just because you have an oxygen cylinder in the hospital. Pulse oximeter may. Kitana target karo? 90 to 93. And uh, lowest is 88, uh, highest is 95. Usse jada oxygen uh, target mat karo. And you decrease the use of blood transfusions, which can increase the chance of retinopathy pre of prematurity. There is some role for vitamin E to prevent it. And always all NICU, you, you need to audit how much oxygen is being used in the newborn babies. And use indirect ophthalmoscopy, headband wala, ophthalmoscopy. It's very easy. I, I was always wondering how to make students remember. Indirect is headband wala. Thanks to Kashinan. So 28 to 30 diopters lens ka istemal karo. And what is anti uh, vascular endothelial growth factor activity? Bebokizumab is what you need to remember. Now, what are the various anti-VEGF antibodies? A pura naam ka batti marne ka cheez hai. So, I think after the uh, Veracizumab is not being used. Ranizumab is being used. Anna, Anna. I'll read out from the words. But at least you need to remember this name. Pega, Pega, Tinib, Bevacizumab. Rani Bizumab. Raja Bizumab nahi hai. Rani Bizumab hai. Aflibarcept. Anti-VEGF fusion protein that binds with all isoforms of VEGF. Aflibarcept. Thoda Urdu Arabic B. Aflibarcept. So, what is this, doctor? This is. Um, First drug, Pegaptanib. Please support, doctor. This is Bevacizumab. This is Rani Bizumab. This is Afliburcept, which you need to remember. So, first of all, my fear, Akko. Uh, Akashwani Durdarshan program mein. Ye Durdarshan program hai morning Akashwani hai. Abhi Akashwani Panchrang Karikram sun rahe hai. Shrotaon ke farmai se hum aaj aapke liye revision pediatrics mein kar rahe hai. Aur Malakpet se Diksha aur Nampali se uh, Hamara Joshi huh? आप सब के फरमाइश से मुकेश की गाना अभी चल रहा है पीडियाट्रिक्स में सो मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ नियोनेटल सीजा हाइपोक्सिक इश्किमिक एंकेफेलोपैथी सेकेंडरी कॉज एक्चुअली मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ नियोनेटल सीजर आ दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट बट दिस अ फेवरेट क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर Lot of people jump uh, febrile seizures. Febrile seizures, mudu newborn la undo. Febrile seizures hota hi nahi. But uh, subtle seizures. One of my uh, classmates, his favorite question, uh, Vijayendra Reddy, are bola re. What is the most common type of seizure type in uh, this thing? Few fellows used to say Lennox, Gastaut syndrome, but ja re ja ke khudo. Mass of tank me khudo. Mass of tank, there is no tank in the cell, right? Which tank it is? Tank bun. Tank bun is open. There is no subtle seizures, so you are going to go. You are going to change the name of Hyderabad. So, subtle seizures is the most common type. Neonatal seizures with best prognosis, focal clonic seizure. Neonatal seizures with worst prognosis, myoclonic seizure. Myoclonic seizures with salam spells. Suddenly, they will have a myoclonus. That's called, sala. typically, when you're all sitting on the table, if the kid is having myoclonic seizure, 
Salam spell is what you need to remember. So quickly remember, doctor. Sapil. Sija, specially seen in preterm and term. Clinical manifests are mild. Usually mild paroxysmal alteration in the motor behavior or automatic dysfunction. Commonest type, 50% of all seizures. And typically ocular, tonic horizontal deviation of the eyes or sustained eye opening. So mother will be saying, Mere munna deko, unka munna to rose sota hai ye to. Pura aake dekhe, dekho re. So it's a subtle seizure. <laughs> Newborn babies, no? Almost 20 hours they sleep. First time I know. This when I have seen uh, Manu sleeping for 20 hours when he is born when I was in internship. I went to pediatrics. What happened? He's sleeping. Yeah, he is supposed to sleep 20 hours. You are supposed to study for 20 hours, said uh, my pediatrics professor. Eh? So 20 hours. Then um, cycling, paddling, boxing, all these movements are subtle seizures. Don't say, my son is Mike Tyson. No, sir, he has subtle seizures. Apnea can be a rare manifestation of a subtle seizure. So, if you have to be a child in the MD, mein, always our tension is, is it a subtle seizure? Is it a subtle seizure? No. I mean, you should know how to differentiate. Now, what is the cause of seizure? Hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is most common cause. Intracranial hemorrhage 10 to 15 percent of causes. Term neonate may subarachnoid hemorrhage is common as a intracranial hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage can occur in a breech or a large infant. And in preterm baby, intraventricular hemorrhage can occur because preterm babies will have their germinal matrix. Uh, in the brain very weak and into that bleeding can occur, parenchymal bleeds. Then, so there are three causes you remember. Term neonate intracranial hemorrhage is subarachnoid. And breech and large infant may or cephalopelvic disproportion I to subdural hemorrhage. Preterm baby may intraventricular hemorrhage. CNS infection can be a cause in 5% and any Hypocalcemia, hypoglycemia, hypomagnesemia, any of them can lead to the development of seizures. Metabolic causes you need to remember. So what are the um, inborn errors of metabolism? Non-ketotic hyperglycemia can lead to myoclonic seizures because of the increased glycine in CSF. Glycinemia, not glycemia, glycinemia. Hmm? Then intractable seizures can occur in, remember, GLUT1 deficiency. You know, GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3 receptors. Na? Pyridoxine deficiency. The other day MCQ came. Yes. Which vitamin uh, respond, seizures will respond? Pyridox. Pyridoxine deficiency, hyperglycinemia, GLUT1 deficiency, folinic acid response to seizure. They are the Inborn errors of metabolisms which can lead to the seizures in the neonate. You remember, right? Now, once more coming back to Rajesh is saying, Sir, pediatrics is not included in score. Abhi abhi bana rahe na. Idli parcel karke, do tin din mein, oh, discussion ke baad chad jayega. Hmm? Forensic, pediatrics, radiology. Shetru Seisham, Runa Seisham nahi ho na. Khatam kar de na. Toh is liye, Runa Seisham, I'm still indebted to you to finish uh, pediatric. Pediatrics ho jayega. Most likely two, three days mein. Then forensic, why sa hi kabhi hamara Suresh vacation ko gaye toh khatam karenge. Before, still 40 days is there, no? But what I finished, how much you read there? Ophthalmology, orthopedics, pathology, eh? there are apka study time banana. Retinopathy of prematurity. How do you grade it? This is a dirty thing to remember. 
ग्रेड वन ग्रेड टू ग्रेड वन मीन्स इफ द मेच्योर इट्स कॉल्ड मेच्योर vessels have reached within one disc diameter of both nasal and temporal ora serrata you call it as mature treatment it does not need treatment further follow up is required grade 2 is called immature vessels are short of one disc diameter of the nasal and temporal ora serrata but retinopathy of prematurity is not developed yet it require weekly follow up grade 3 means retinopathy of prematurity developed it has a stage 1 stage 1 and stage 2 once more retinopathy of prematurity mein grades hain grade ke baad grade 3 mein stages hain complicated life right right so my ex boyfriend committed suicide present boyfriend i have a breakup and already there is a boyfriend in waiting in india and a us family match is cleared and uh, i am getting engaged so that is called most complicated life of course more complication means i became second year pregnant and also had uh, uh, aborted uh, with another boyfriend who is not a medical guy at all huh? so you have all these complications that is retinopathy of prematurity grade 2 3 so stage 1 usually resolves spontaneously 1 and 2 80 to 90% cases require weekly exam but if it is stage 3 it is called threshold disease so treatment is cryotherapy or laser therapy then stage 4a means the retinopathy of prematurity led to partial retinal detachment but not involving macula here the treatment is cryo or laser and scleral buckling stage 4 may means retinal detachment is there with macula involved so there the treatment is vitreotomy and complete retinal detachment occurred because of the retinopathy of the prematurity and the vitreo retinal proliferation of the fibrovascular tissue is vitreotomy so idantha indante mental imagination until entrance correctly like boomra does the googly no like that correct your answer should go and hit the midwicket and that precision you need to prepare for exam doctor isliye mai kya bol raha na you are completely unemployed no coach huh if you want i'll send a card mercedes benz to pick you up 11 am ko aa jana air conditioned classroom diksha next 43 days my bolro if not i'll come and talk to direct 11 am beautiful time 43 days mein you can become get in top 100 ranks in neat pg my assure karo mentally prepared to hang around here up to 8 pm नौ घंटे हैं आप आओ सो जाओ नो प्रॉब्लम बट इफ यू आर देर इन द होम नो एवरीबडी वॉन्ट यू ये पैरासिटामॉल का एक्सपायरी डेट देखो बेटा <laughs> वो बाजू वाले मेड को बेटे को लूज मोशन हो रहा है जरा दवा दे दो दे ऑल डोंट काउंट बिकॉज ए डॉक्टर इन द फैमिली इज मोस्ट प्रिविलेज कमोडिटी लेट मी टेल यू आई वॉज सिटिंग विथ माई मदर शी सेट डोंट पुट मी ऑन वेंटिलेटर one privilege to have md general medicine murli bharadwaj as my son is without going to ventilator let me die i am so contented in the life you made all you kids made me happy right so lot of times expectations kisi ka bp dekhna kisi ka sugar dekhna you are a home doctor 
सो वो सबको डिविएशन को छोड़ो आओ बैठो आई एम गौतम बुद्ध बुद्धम शरणम गच्छा शांति यहां मिलता है आपको नामपली के क्लासरूम में सब छोड़ के आ जाओ पूरा सांसारिक बंधन को छोड़ के आओ बैठो पढ़ो टिल नाइट एट ओ क्लॉक पिक द बैग एंड गो होम यू प्रैक्टिस इट फोर फाइव डेज नो इट बिकम एडिक्शन द मोमेंट यू आर एडिक्टेड टू गुड हैबिट्स दैट इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ जर्नी टू एक्सलेंस राइट सो यू आर ब्रिलियंट you have the right material you have a right teacher and companion to study with you what should stop you from becoming topper in the tomorrow's exam right doctor next to 40 40 days journey to become topper no demotivation zero demotivation zero negative forces acting on you zero doubts about your own ability to be in the top 100 you don't need uh, years together to sit and study let me tell you you just need solid 30 days to become a topper in it please honestly right before that you start also no use because you will forget what you read right so that's a point good doctor 2 ghante khatam kiya humne uh 9:20 another 10 minutes we finish and go Okay. Now, plus disease means what? Whenever retinopathy or prematurity is there, there is a vascular dilatation and tortuosity of the posterior retinal vessels, globe na, retina, posterior retinal vessels, at least two quadrants. So retina is divided into four quadrants, and at least two quadrants are showing. tortuous posterior retinal vessel means there is a neovascularization that indicates severe degree of progressive retinopathy of prematurity jisko kehte hain plus disease is what you need to remember so what are the various stages doctor stage 1 means you find only flat demarcation line we have seen na iske pehle uh, uh, retinopathy of prematurity ka maine dikha hai na different uh, images so go back to that oh no Very good. Vinisha is promising that she'll come from tomorrow. We are missing you, Vinisha. So now, stage one. There is a flat demarcation line. Stage two. There is a crest between vascularized and non-vascularized retina. Stage three, fibrovascular proliferation. Stage four, partial detachment. Stage five, full. retinal detachment is what you need to remember then uh, what is meant by zone 1 a circular area centered on the optic nerve with a radius twice the distance from the optic nerve to the macula zone 2 it extends from the end of the zone 1 up to nasal ora serrata zone 3 corresponds to the growing remaining crescent area so that's how zones are being divided into now continuing our journey on rop retinopathy of prematurity there is something called pre threshold disease 
It is divided into type one ROP, which has got zone one, zone two. Type two ROP, which has got zone one, stage one, two without plus disease, zone two, stage three without plus disease, etc., etc. I leave the literature for you. Ha, uh, this ah. Uh, so please review once more for different degrees of uh, retinopathy of prematurity, different zones ka mamla kya hai. And this is how uh, only line of demarcation, then uh, between, uh, then there is an elevated uh, uh, thing and then there is a development of retinal detachment with uh, hemorrhage. This is how the fibrovascular tissue developing in the uh, vitreous is causing a tractional retinal detachment in case of retinopathy of prematurity. Once more, zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, in that stage 1, 2, 3, 4, I leave the literature for you. So this is before and after the laser photocoagulation for retinopathy of prematurity. This is after laser photocoagulation. This is before that. You see all the vessels here, there is a photocoagulation done. So this is another example of a laser photocoagulation application retinopathy of prematurity. A non-confluent laser spot density and a confluent laser spot density. Now comes neonatal sepsis. Neonatal sepsis is divided into early onset, late onset. Early onset means onset before 72 weeks. Common source organisms come from the maternal vagina, urogenital tract. And group B streptococci are most common in India. And uh, but in India, I mean this is overall, but in India, it is Klebsiella staph aureus e. coli. Overall worldwide, group B streptococci. That means Indian mothers are more clean. Right here, Klebsiella staphylococcus aureus and e. coli are more likely. Then clinical feature is pneumonia. Mortality is very high. Late onset means after 72 hours. Commonly, it is the nosocomial. Nurse Mary will give the late neonatal sepsis. Original Mary Mata, mother will give early onset neonatal sepsis. So environment, community, nursery, physicians. Then Klebsiella staph aureus E. coli are common for late onset. And pneumonia, meningitis also will occur. And uh, septicemia, these are all the features. They're only pneumonia, early onset. A difference is pakka yadrakana. And generally mortality is very low if it is late onset. It is, if it is uh, late onset. Then what is the sepsis screen in a newborn baby? Get a TLC. Less than 5000 means leukopenia. Absolute neutrophil count less than 1800. Neutropenia will be there. So there are two types of charts that are used. Called Manro's chart in term baby and Mujino's chart in VLBW. This is Manro's chart. For the neutrophils, total neutrophils by time, across time, Mandro chart, Mujino chart. These are the two charts which are used to count the absolute neutrophil count and typically less than 1800 is considered to be neutropenia, which is a very important risk factor for neonatal sepsis. Immature total neutrophil count, immature to immature cells to total uh, neutrophil count more than two that means band cells are more than 20 band cells are the that's called shift to left more than 20 percent and the esr more than 15 mm at the end of one hour c reactive positive and any more than two positive findings in this sepsis screen is a diagnostic of neonatal sepsis similarly procalcitonin आपको कई सारे कोविड में मालूम है ना पूरा लैब वाले बिलियनर्स बन गए, so 
There is nothing that we can do about COVID, but unfortunately, COVID has come to 5,000 से आठ हजार तक खत्म लैब रिपोर्ट्स में, राइट? सो आईएल सिक्स, आईएल एट, न्यूट्रोफिल सीडी इलेवन बी, न्यूट्रोफिल सीडी सिक्सटी फोर, लाइपोकैल्सिन टू, दिस आर ऑल द इन्फ्लेमेटरी मार्कर्स, एरली सेंसिटिव मार्कर्स ऑफ इन्फेक्शन, वेरे सीआरपी इज़ अ लेट स्पेसिफिक डायग्नोस्टिक मार्कर ऑफ न्यून Two minute hand wash before entering into NICU is the simplest way you can avoid it. Haan. Is what you need to remember. We'll finish at 100 point. Necrotizing enterocolitis. The most common GI emergency in neonate is necrotizing enterocolitis. It is never congenital. It is only acquired because of your preterm baby being born, hyaline membrane disease is there, etc. So prematurity, low birth weight baby, formula feeding, sepsis, umbilical catheterization, cocaine, IUGR, they are all the important risk factors for development of necrotizing enterocolitis. So typically, if you do the um, umbilical artery Doppler, fetal Doppler, Absent or reversed diastolic flow. Diastolic flow reversal means there is an increased resistance to the flow to the placenta. So, so absent or reversed diastolic flow in umbilical artery is indicative of a decreased perfusion to the placenta, which increases the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis. So, how does a baby will be born? Abdominal distension, blood in the stools. Nematosis intestinal is where air is there in the gut wall. That is called Bell's stage 2 of NEC. Necrotizing enteritis colitis ka bhi classification hai. O R A. Abhi retinopathy of prematurity kadam ho gaya na? O R A. Levine ka hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy ka. O A staging hai. Sarnad then Sarnad classification is there. O A stage hai. Yaha Bell's stage hai NEC ke liye. Bell's scoring system. So, perforation of the gut, any of them can occur in necrotizing enterocolitis. So, what is the diagnostic triad of clinical features in necrotizing enterocolitis? Metabolic acidosis, hyponatremia, thrombocytopenia is called diagnostic triad of Necrotizing enterocolitis. You didn't expect the thrombocytopenia, hyponatremia will be there in uh, the triad. But that is the triad. Now, what is the bell staging? Bell staging is used for NEC. So, this is how there is abdominal distension, bloody stool, and all the air in the wall of the gut is necrotizing enterocolitis. What is Bell's staging? It is used for neonatal uh, enterocolitis. Of course, once more you have things like uh, temperature instability, apnea, bradycardia, lethargy, abdominal signs, radiological signs. Based on the stage, how do you treat energy? When life is miserable. You have to move on, right? Move on is a very important buzzword, doctor. Don't be stuck up with one page in Davidson or one paragraph in Harrison and keep on struggling with the table. Keep moving on and then come back once more. So how do you treat? Intravenous antibiotics, nilpar orally, bubble rest need to be given and you need to reset that infarcted portion of the gut. So, Sarnath and Sarnath staging is for birth asphyxia and hypoxic encephalopathy. Bellard scoring is to objectively assess gestational age. Bridgerton scoring is for neonatal behavior assessment scale. Abba, neonatal ko bhi behavior leta. Kya baat hai bhai? Downs scoring is respiratory distressing. 
टर्म बेबी तो ये बेल स्टेजिंग है ये क्या होता है डॉक्टर बेलार्ड स्कोरिंग टू एस एस दी जस्टेशनल एज इसमें क्या क्या देखते हो स्किन कैसा है लैनगो कैसा है एंड आर देर एनी क्रीसेस ऑन द फीट हाउ इज द ब्रेस्ट इज देर एनी फ्लैट एरियोला और फुल एरियोला हाउ इज द आई एंड इयर जेनाइटल्स इज द डिसेंडेड टेस्टिस और देर और टेस्टिस इज अनडिसेंडेड so there are all the so physical maturity neuromuscular maturity they are all taken into consideration to assess the gestational age when the newborn is born using the bellard staging brisden staging to know the neonatal behavioral assessment how is he interacting with you is he listening to you is he alert is he oriented is the baby is he consolable no so i will start a brisden scoring for neat pg coaching class how is your behavioral assessment motor tone kaushik say like this you are active how is activity movements then uh, etc etc at least remember brisden then down says for respiratory distress in newborn you will look for respiratory rate per minute cyanosis retraction grunting air entry and make a down staging is what we need to remember sarve jana sukhiro bhavantu so we all enjoyed a great 2 uh, ghante uh, garma garam discussion so fir kal hum uh, pediatrics khatam karne ke baad grand test discussion shuru karenge kya rai hai because totally there are 400 paragraphs 35 pages pediatrics ah uh, endukante pediatrics mein 10 questions tak aayega and not i don't have much knowledge i don't know about others but my beats posting also is being posted and these marks in my final year those beats yeah pediatrics is a little alien little alien not as alien as anesthesia anesthesia to complete uh, psychiatry anesthesia dermatology radiology is like uh, we act that we know all that right so all right thank you very much to vinisha kashina palakurthi dinakar reddy and many more who are all uh, gave us the company and uh, i keep posting early morning questions i want you to answer the questions and also the uh, audio explanations thank you very much